Hello everyone, this is me again, just doing a follow-up on my nitpick video, um, kind of diving into, I wanted to dive into details about uh, the importance of taking into account tolerances, doing real-world measurements, uh, and why you, like, it's important to ensure that you have, uh, you know, alignment jigs and proper alignment and make certain that everything's where it should be and that your real world assumptions match drawing diagrams from the manufacturer. Uh, so uh, I was actually, for me, I was getting some weird input shaper graphs when I was pushing my plate. If you saw my other videos, um, I had pushed my plate stacks all the way against the 3030 aluminum extrusion because that's uh, the way it's designed, it, everything lines up by butting up against the 3030 extrusion. Uh, but when I did that, I was getting some really bad uh, input shaper graphs, and it looked like I was getting binding on my belts. And I was like, that's weird. Why is that a problem? Uh, so uh, and it became better when I pulled the plate stock away from the 3030 uh, extrusion. I figured okay um why is that a problem so i pulled down the step file for the v core 4 300 as you can see and just uh and did some real world measurements and some measurements in fusion and found some interesting things um and also kind of goes to my point about why we should probably add like why there should probably be some more gap and space between belts and various parts um so if uh, starting off with the belt distance from the 3030 extrusion here, uh, if we take a look at this belt distance, that's 0 0.87 millimeters per spec. Um, this is held in place by a uh, bearing that is 13 millimeters uh, in diameter, uh, which has a bolt that goes through that center up here. Uh, so if you have a bearing that's slightly larger, that's going to push this belt closely to the uh, extrusion. Um, I measured my bearings, they're 13. I'm not worried about that. Uh, I may be worried slightly if maybe these plates are a little bit skewed, like this plate is back a little bit further while this plate is forward a little bit. So you get some angle tilt going on, uh, but that isn't really do it well that's quote unquote not able to be done because the plate here is, no oh shit, I, I don't have the space mouse on, well, I, I do, it's just not turned on. But anyways, uh, so in theory, it should not be possible to skew these because you have the plates butted up against the 3030 extrusion, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, kind of going down the possibilities here, I realized that for whatever reason, I measured the belt here that they've got in this, and the belt thickness is 1.38 millimeters. And I thought, hmm, that's weird, because when I measured the belt, um, I measured the belt with my tool, uh, uh, measure the belt in various components, uh, my belt came out to 1.5, one millimeters. Uh, now I realize this is kind of a cheap uh, caliper, but uh, you know, it's the caliper has been fairly accurate. You know, it's this is an eight millimeter spacer at 7.98, um, and I've checked it with another uh, micrometer, which is 7.9, uh, 7.992. Uh, so I know this is, you know, fairly accurate all the way down to you know, this last digit here, uh, plus or minus one of this last digit, which is kind of what I've always assumed uh, for accuracy on this is plus or minus 0 0.01. Uh, so I went to the manufacturer website and on the belts that we're using and according to the manufacturer website, the height, which is the ridges, the is supposed to be 1.5. Um, so I was like, okay, hmm. Uh, checked here and uh, McMaster Car, because they provide CAD files, pulled down that CAD file and I measured it, and it's 1.39. Um, but 
my measurement is 1.5, basically 1.5. So if my belts are 1.5, then that means that the distance from my the belt surface to the extrusion is now down to 0 0.75. Uh, okay, that's problematic like that starting to shrink that gap um, and kind of indicates some of the problems uh, you know some problems like measurements are important uh, real world tolerances are important to take into account like um, you know if if the 3030 extrusion is like plus or minus zero, uh, zero point uh, plus or minus one millimeter right it may be 29 millimeters or 31 millimeters not saying that it is in some parts then that means that any gaps and distances that you need to account for need to be based off of the worst distance uh, from the belt, uh, the closest distance between these versus not the most ideal or optimal, right? Uh, because if, like, that's the tolerance per spec. Uh, so, yeah, um, according to the manufacturer, that's spec is one, uh, 0 0.15 so we are you know we are sitting very close to these uh, aluminum extrusions this distance is a little bit better at you know 1.12 but again this distance here like I mentioned this is still a you know uh, a uh, zero points oh come on there we go 0.38 belt, not a, or, sorry, 1.38 belt, not a 1.5 belt. So that shrinks this distance down to one millimeter, right? Um, and I was uh, doing some measurements as well on the plate stack here. Uh, because like I mentioned, if you saw my other videos, when I moved the plate stack away from the extrusion, I was getting better input shaper results. Um, I assumed it was due to better alignment but i actually question that now because um, when i measure this it's supposed to be 43.00 uh, millimeters of distance between the like that's how it's thick it's supposed to be or the distance it's supposed to be um, it is and then also it is supposed to be three millimeter thick plate um, so if I go back to my uh, measurements here, uh, I didn't take a measurement of the thickness. Uh, the thickness was pretty spot on, but this distance was again 0.1 millimeters shorter. So uh, I basically have 0 0.2 millimeter, like 0 0.2, 0 0.22 millimeters subtracted from this distance now so my belts are essentially 0 0.65 millimeters away from that back uh extrusion which is kind of, which probably explains the shaper graph problems that i was having because it's just the tolerances were just so close uh the the distance here is just required to be so close but the real world tolerances of these parts uh really can't deal with that closeness that this is like the 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 plus or minus tolerances from these parts um, just can't deal with that distance so my input shaper was probably like when I was getting uh, uh, doing input shaper these belts are probably bouncing up against the 30 30 extrusion causing input shaper problems um, so yeah, it, you know, I, I was just like, oh, well, that, that sucks. Um, and if we look at other parts too, like, you know, for example, the, the T-nuts, uh, you know, the drawing here makes the T-nuts look like they perfectly align things. But like, for example, the, uh, they look like they perfectly align almost the uh, extrusion, uh, sorry, the linear rail but the, uh, we know the linear rail comes with an alignment jig, uh, two uh, alignment parts, one for the back and front, when, so you can align it. So that means that the tolerances of these is not enough, so like not good enough to where we need a printed part for that. 
And if we look at that, that is 8.20 millimeters. Um, my measurement has that at 8.36 millimeters. And then if I look at the T-nut themselves, um, the thickness of the T-nut here is uh, ba -ba -ba, eight millimeters. So this is supposed to be eight millimeters. The measured tolerance of the T-nut that exact same T nut is 7.7. 7. Um, yeah, the there's a lot of room for error in the parts assembly. I think a very large margin uh, for parts uh, room for error in the parts assembly, and why it's so important that everything is aligned. Um, in uh, line correctly and it's hard to align stuff correctly when the things that you're aligning have are off by 0.1 millimeters and the expectation is that the belt is thinner by 0.1 millimeters so you you already have 0.2 millimeters of error on a 0.87 millimeter gap um, like that is yeah like like we need some additional room here like what would just kind of what would be nice if possible is that the these plates were redesigned a little bit to bring these uh bearings and motors into the center of the rat rig a little bit more to provide more gap back here and more gap over here for the belts to actually uh, be routed correctly uh, or to be to vibrate without bumping it against the 3030 extrusion um, the you know it'd be also nice I I'm assuming these plates were either laser cut or probably stamped plates because if that would explain the 0.1 millimeter of error if they were stamped and then uh, sanded and then uh, anodized uh, like that would explain the 0.1 millimeter of error there uh, but yeah it's uh yeah it, it definitely needs something um and this also explains kind of why i was seeing really good results from uh, the cnc plate stack um because it is actually true to spec 43 millimeters basically on the dot so installing those gets me better alignment because I can actually line it up and butt it up right against the 3030 extrusion without any problems I it's not going to be misaligned because it is the right size and the right values across the board so um, yeah um, fun times um, I wish your builds are uh, successful and smoother than mine have been. Uh, in, in I say that uh, a little bit tongue in cheek. My build has been very fine. It was very smooth. I've had good successful prints out of it. Had a great time. Um, I really enjoy it. The printer. Um, I am just nitpicky, as you've seen, and a little bit crazy. So I do probably do way too much playing with input shaper and min maxing the hell out of this so that way when i print i know i'm going to print successfully every single time and it's going to print to my specifications of tolerances and everything so um cheerio i, I have a good time um and i think this video is finally successful after the 15th attempt good luck <laughs>